Hey guys, it's Jonah with the Hogwarts Rejects, and today we'll be presenting Milestone 4. First, we'll look at our problem of study along with our proposed solution. Next, we'll go over our design and how it evolved. Then, we'll dive into our testing protocol and wrap it all up with a summary of our project. So, our problem of study basically states that Apple replaced Touch ID with a newer and better Face ID. The problem arises from the recent pandemic. Uh, requiring workers to wear masks, which prevents users from using Face ID. Um, our solution is to implement Touch ID into the power button of the iPhone, much like Samsung's products and Apple's new iPad Air. Uh, we first started off with Iris ID, as you can see here. A uh, user presses a zoom notification on the lock screen, and the iPhone prompts the user to scan their eyes. Um, the iPhone unlocks and zoom is automatically launched. Um, the same can be done by entering a passcode for authentication, um, but we ditched this idea uh, due to accessibility issues that blind people would encounter with the Iris ID. Um, we replaced Iris ID with the Touch ID um, that all Apple users are familiar with. Um, a user presses on the Zoom notification and the iPhone prompts the user to use Touch ID, which then unlocks the iPhone and launches Zoom. Um, like before, passcode is always an alternative authentication route. Here you can see our mock-up um, where our solution is presented on an iPhone screen. Um, you can also see how Touch ID is integrated into the power button, um, courtesy of Apple for the Touch ID picture. Um, our first prototype addresses the issues a face mask brings to the workplace when trying to unlock an iPhone with Face ID. Um, Apple's Face ID can't recognize users when part of their face is being blocked. Um, and since Touch ID is gone, uh, people have to unlock their phone iPhones the pedestrian way. Um, users want to be able to access their iPhone quickly and efficiently, and entering a passcode every single time is the opposite of that. Um, additionally, if users have to keep removing their face mask uh, to unlock their iPhone, it could be dangerous for surrounding parties and take up unnecessary time. Um, in remote work, this can cause users to be late to virtual meetings, or cause delays in responding to their coworkers. Um, as stated in our problem study, the typical interaction goal between the user following CDC guidelines of wearing a mask and the iPhone is easy entry in unlocking their iPhone. By reintroducing Touch ID to um, newer iPhone generations, it'll eliminate the mentioned issues and allow users to not think twice about unlocking their iPhone, thus being more productive. Um, unlocking the iPhone should be a seamless and quick process, and we think our solution will do just that. Uh, Roya is now going to walk you through our first prototype. So these are the uploads from our first prototype. I just got a notification that I have a daily scrum meeting that starts in one minute. I'm going to unlock my iPhone using my fingerprint on the power button. My phone is unlocked, and I'm going to access my Zoom application to join the meeting. After this meeting is done, I'm going to turn off my iPhone the same way with the power button. I'm in the meeting, and it's turned off, and the cycle is over. Thanks, Roya. Our second prototype addresses users being able to access their applications for work without needing to take off their mask and their Touch ID is not working. Um, our problem with study states easy entry into the iPhone as a goal and that masks are required. Uh, users will simply use the passcode functionality of the iPhone to access their work. Um, although entering a passcode is cumbersome and not as seamless as Face or Touch ID, it'll prevent users from becoming a safety hazard to surrounding parties all while allowing users to access their applications to work productively. Uh, Royal will now uh, walk you through our second prototype. Thanks, Jonah. So these are our artboards for the second prototype. So I just got a notification that we have a daily scrum meeting that starts in one minute. However, my fingers cannot unlock the iPhone with the Touch ID because I just washed my hands and they're wet. So I'm going to try to, and 
it doesn't work. So I need to enter my passcode. So I'm going to enter my passcode quickly. My phone is unlocked and I can access my Zoom meeting. Um, then the Zoom meeting and then after I'm going to turn it off. So I no longer need my phone. My phone is off and the cycle is over. Hi, I'm Cindy. I'm going to begin by explaining our testing protocol. Our main research question is as follows. What are the most effective design strategies for iPhones to enhance user experience of remote workers wearing masks? Based on the research question, we are aiming to conduct the research using mixed methods, combining a survey and a short interview. First, informed consent. To deal with informed consent, the study team member will interact with human subjects for the informed con consent process. We will have all participants answer the informed consent form before proceeding to data collection. If a participant does not agree with any item in the informed consent form and thus does not sign the form, the participant will be opted out of the research. The participant will only be part of the research once they sign the informed consent form. A sample informed consent form is as follows. So the participant will have to answer all these questions and agree to the research that is being conducted in order, to, in order for the participant to participate in the research and it indicates the agreement of, of the participant to participate in this study. Next, I will explain the specific data that we aim to collect and how it will be organized. The expected number of participants is approximately 20. Researchers suggest that from 3 to 20 participants can provide valid research, and a good baseline is between 5 and 10 participants. In general, there should be more participants for more complex, highly critical projects, while fewer participants are necessary when testing more novel designs. We will send out an email with a Zoom meeting invitation for an orientation for the research participation. During the Zoom orientation, instructions for research participation will be provided to the participants using PowerPoint slides. We will explain how to demonstrate the prototype and send an email including the slides and a link to the prototype. The participants will be asked to record the screen while they're demonstrating the prototype. After the participants experience the content and interact with the interface with the prototype, they will answer a survey. The survey will ask participants' opinion on the prototype for the Touch ID feature that we propose to introduce to iPhone 11 Pro Max or other newer iPhones that have been produced with only a Face ID feature. After participants complete the survey and submit it, an email notification will be sent to the researchers. A sample questionnaire that we created can be found here. In this questionnaire, we asked about the gender, the age, and the age starts from 18, and employment status, and how many times um, does the person unlock the phone during the day, and whether the person, whether the participant has an iPhone or not, and if the iPhone, uh, if the participant doesn't have an iPhone, what kind of phone the participant has, and um, the level of pro the prototype that the participant felt like and whether the participant thinks that the Touch ID should be added back to newer iPhones, and whether having a Face ID feature is sufficient to unlock iPhones, and um, whether the participant believes that the Face ID should be eliminated and Touch ID should be the only means to unlock iPhones. And then the participant is uh, asked an open-ended question to answer what other features that the participant would find useful to be implemented on iPhones for remote workers wearing masks. The last question here is optional. In testing protocol, we got to think about how will that analysis help answer our research question. 
we will conduct qualitative data analysis, especially the mapping analysis to analyze the collective data. The mapping analysis is used to identify and interpret patterns and themes in qualitative data. For the qualitative data analysis, five steps will be taken. First, prepare and organize the data. We will first record the time it took for participants to demonstrate the prototype by watching the screen recording that the participant sent via email. We will also transcribe interviews for all data analysis to review and explore the data. For the data collected by questionnaires and interviews, we will examine the data for patterns or repeated ideas that emerge. We expect different factors to form relationship. For instance, when analyzing the survey answers, we expect to see that the relationship between employment status and the participants' thoughts on whether the touch ID feature is needed or not. Also, we expect to find a relationship between the type of phone the participants possesses and the participants' thought on the Touch ID feature. Another relationship may be relationship between the usability of the prototype and the thoughts of participants on the Touch ID feature. This may be an indicator to show that the prototype failed to satisfy the user and thus the participants could not agree that the Touch ID feature should be added back to iPhones because the prototype was unappealing to the participants. The list of relationships is not exhaustive and we will be able to find other relationships once we actually collect the data. 3. Develop a data coding system. Based on initial ideas that we came up with, we will apply a set of codes that we can apply categorize the data. Categorizing the data will enable us to better conclude our findings. Or assign codes to the data. For the survey, we will go through each participant's re response and tag them with codes in the spreadsheet. As we go through the data, we will create new codes to add to the system if necessary. We will try to see the consistency of the answers throughout the three different data collections method. The same procedures will be taken for the transcribed interview answers. 5. Identify recurring themes. Lastly, we will ink codes together in cohesive, overarching themes. We will try to see the consistency of the answers throughout the three different data collection methods. By conducting a qualitative data analysis, we will be able to illustrate what the participants believe as an effective design strategy for iPhones to enhance user experience of remote workers wearing masks. Mainly with the data collected, we will be able to conclude whether or not the participants believe that adding back to Touch ID feature on your iPhones will be used for all remote workers wearing masks. We expect that the answers by participants to be categorized into the addition of Touch ID being efficient, inefficient, or having no impact. For conducting test, testing procedure during pandemic, we do considering the fact that all our materials can be administered online. The entire testing procedure can be remotely accomplished by, uh, for, com for communication, email will be mainly used if there are emergencies or any other imminent issues, participants will be able to reach out to the researchers via text messaging or iPhone calls. All materials, including the informed, informed consent form, the survey and links to, to prototypes and Zoom meetings will be sent out to the participant via email. We will also use our website to post information regarding this research. The participant orientation and interview will be conducted via Zoom. These measures, these measures will ensure the uh, safety of participant, participants as well as the researchers.
we learned how to collaborate as a group and just be able to think of a useful idea related to our th semester theme, which was remote work, and just uh, being able to uh, think of an idea and put it to life be uh, by using different tools related to the subject of HCI, such as Adobe XD. Uh, what was most useful? The most useful thing was being able to collaborate ideas with one another to get our final product. Um, it was a great lesson just to be able to use the creativity side of one another and uh, use the technology as well uh, that was available to us and just be able to combine them together to create a useful and uh, related product to our theme. Uh, what we enjoyed the most was uh, just being able to use Adobe XD itself and designing uh, the wireframes, prototypes, and just being able to talk about our designs as a group and presenting the videos for each milestone of this project. Um, credits go to Roya Bizzotti. Uh, she created the prototypes and PowerPoint presentations. Jonah Kim, who created the prototype and extended descriptions. Cindy Ryu, uh, who composed the testing protocols, edited and posted the video and implemented the website. Kano Kim, who composed type of an, uh, analysis for research questions, and uh, Mustafa Siddi, who composed the summary and edited the slides for this video. Well, thank you so much.